So we are in downtown Osaka. It is very early in the morning. We flew in last night. We got to bed at around midnight. And this morning, we are here for something very, very exciting. Now this guy has bought me a car, sight unseen of course, and of course off the internet um, from some random. Now, it's a little bit of a crazy adventure tour we're doing. We're gonna be in Japan for a few days. We're gonna be road tripping this car, but to pick it up, the previous owner couldn't actually meet us today. So I've transferred the money onto the internet and he's left the ticket in a family mart. So that is where we've got to go now. All right, so we are in the family mart and now we're on the hunt, of course, for the thousand lemons, the most delicious drink that you so can buy. Good in Japan. I don't see it in the back fridge though. They're either going to be uh, big ones here or they have like little counters over here where they have the kind of more oh, medical yeah. equipment. <laughs> and right here is our, you can uh, check out those. And then yeah, of course man. behind, true to his word, that's good because that was a lot of money. Um, that is our parking ticket. So we'll buy these. Um, Amazing. Konnichiwa. Oh, hey, have you got money? I do. <laughs> Then you put the money down here in the little tray. A couple of thousand lemons that we can drink while we wait for our car. Arigato. Awesome. Arigato gozaimasu. Arigato. So now, um, over here at the Midosuji car pit. Car pit. The car pit. We can go over and um, get our car. It's in this. It's, oh, it's a so stacker. This is a vertical stacker. It's one of those mad car stacker things. Konnichiwa. Ah, hi. Good bit of money. How do I sign? You got to pay him, I think. How much? It says, it says how much it is somewhere. Three hundred fifty yen. Oh, awesome. That's very good English. Thank you. Oh yeah, do you know your ten a thousand? Oh yeah. Oh. I got the So your car Martin that I bought for you as a Christmas present is sitting inside this building. Uh, and you're about to see it for the very first time. This is like as exciting as it gets. Of course I've bought it sight unseen. Of you know you it. Did. Of course I have. I got the I hope he gets that car for us because Of course last time we came to Japan I got my fair lady, my dream car, and now we get Marty's dream car. You better believe it. I'm so keen. Oh no, you did it! <laughs> yes! That's amazing! Do um do you drive out or we drive you drive out? Okay. Dude, it's a super turbo! So here it is everybody. Check out the plates. Check out the plates. Nissan. Oh man, look at it. Wow, it's clean. Look how clean it is. I'll grab your is. lemons. We'll celebrate with those in a second. Look how clean it is. Here you go, Martin. Oh man. 1,000 lemons for you. 1,000 lemons for me. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> look at it. This is amazing. Far out. It's way cleaner than your last one, isn't it? Yeah. That's incredible. I got the gozaimasu. Does this yeah. spin? Um, yes. Yeah? I think we're gonna get the Wheel of Fortune little spin going on. Hey. Oh my hey. God. Hey. <laughs> this is amazing. 
It's in such good condition. Merry Christmas, Martin, and Thanks, cheers. man. You gotta down the whole is, thousand lemons. This is amazing, really? Do the I? The whole thing, are you ready? And here's two mad JDM cars. Amazing. We gotta go get our bags from the hotel, which is that way, but, oh no, I think that's one way. We, we go that way. Yes, look at this thing. Dude, there's a note. Wait on, before we go, what does the note say? In case that's important. Oh, I'm gonna pull over and we'll find out. Oh, it appears to be working. We gotta go get our bags, but let's just pull over here first and have a look. Yeah. See exactly what it is that we have. Man, these streets are so tiny, like... Oh, oh hello. I'm going oh, on there. Oh, scrub, scrub. <laughs> oh. I know I'm known for buying a lot of like crappy cars on the internet, but this here has actually exceeded my expectations. I mean, the photos of it looked good. And let me give you the quick background <laughs> of how this car came to being. So almost 10 years ago, Marty owned one of these cars and he ended up selling it. One of those decisions that you regret for the rest of your life, um, basically because he needed more room in the back because he was playing in a band. Um, and legit, his girlfriend hated the sound of the turbocharger, the supercharger, both of them. She just said it makes too much crazy noise. So he sold it. Now, since then, Marty has attempted to buy it back fairly regularly over the last few years and has not been successful. So this here, I saw come up on the internet for sale and I was just like, I'm just buying it. And it had like, I don't know, it had like quite a bit of interest on the internet yep. and I was just like, I'm buying this car no matter what. So I did, I transferred the money, the rest is history. And here it is, we've got a Nissan March Super Turbo. Now, I actually don't know much more about these cars yep. other than sending some bulk cash overseas without <laughs> having any actual guarantee there was gonna be something at the other end, let alone a parking ticket in a family mart. Tell us all about this Man, crazy little car. I cannot believe how good condition this is. This is amazing. Like mine was okay. But this is incredible. And worse than trying to buy it back is that I said to the dude, I'd love to buy it back because I ran into him randomly. I'm like, hey man, you bought my car. Can I buy it back? And he said, yes. And oh, then he said, no. Oh no. Which is even worse because you probably remember I called you. I'm like, man, I ran into him and he said, like, he'd consider oh. it. And then a week later, he's like, no, you can't have it. Just tempting you with the nugget. Tempting. Once anyway, you get but you these are amazing it. because this is a K10 Nissan. Yes, it's a Nissan. Nissan March. Dude, look um, how good the stickers are on the back. Yeah, man. Remember you had to remake yours? Yeah, I did. This look is how the good same, the quality of that this is. This is the same family as a Figaro. And that badge looks Except new. it's twin charged, so turbocharged and supercharged. The supercharger comes on, and when the turbo makes enough boost to take over, the supercharger turns off, and it's all turbocharged, nuggety JDM 80s action. Do you reckon this was owned by a collector or something? Like I legit, I've not seen it. a car of this era that is in that good a condition. So I'm pretty sure it's been painted, but it's been painted well, man. Like I can't really fault the paint job. It's um, it's good. And I think someone really cared about it. I feel like this is the kind of car that went to meets. Unless it's not painted like in the engine bay or inside oh, the that's, doors. That's likely, but- Oh, like, it looks good. No, nah, dude, it's a, it's a, and you can see some overspray and stuff like it's it's been painted yeah there's overspray down here as well on but these it's seals. been done really well and the interior is perfect man look at the dash it looks amazing the this is a different is so steering clean. wheel to yours right that's the, yeah that's the original factory one it came with i never got that steering wheel it's just it's as good and better than my old one this is amazing we really need to see what this says but we also need to see inside the uh the engine bay there martin open him up some mad backwards bonnet action Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, man. But this is not a um, K car, is it? No, so this is this is in the next class up from a K car. So it's a 0 0.9 litre or 933 cc, single overhead cam, turbo's there, supercharger's down there somewhere. You can unplug it and turn it off and go just full turbo, but it's the laggiest thing you'll ever drive in your whole life. Our first stop, we have to get a pod filter. Yours used to sound so good. Oh, Dude, it's so good. The honk, the honk causes problems, okay? Um, but man, this is pretty good. This is this is good. I mean, it's it's it is 80s. This is 29 years old, at least 29 years old. Um, so there's a good chance something like all these rubber things don't usually love it after that amount of time. But we're we gonna road trip this thing. Does anyone on the internet know how to read that? Does it, can anybody tell Dude, us what that says? The internet knows. Because maybe it's important, like, this car is stolen, or this car doesn't work. The internet so, knows how to read it. Here, I've got a thing. I've got a thing. 
I'll just take a photo Does that of say it. Made in. You are the resource. A little in it's Russia. Scanning for Japanese. Looking for Japanese text. Like, oh, it's come up. It's come like up. you've been royally. Buy a super in. turbo. I feel a little bad when I blow it. Oh, poor show. When it blows, hey, I do not feel well. Also, when heavy, rear wheel. When it is heavy, rear wheel. Please do your best. I have three o'clock. Thank you very much. Well, I have heavy rear wheel means it's scrubbed. Yeah. We worked that out already. A little when I blow it. Do you reckon blow it means like give it to it? Yeah. I, I feel a little bad when I blow it. When it blows, I do not feel very well. Blows, blower, supercharger. Blow smoke? Supercharger? Um, yeah. Supercharger doesn't work? Yeah, maybe. Well, it has, yeah, it's got a blower, that's true. Oh, yeah, blower. <laughs> I don't know. You think? We're going to work it out. Um, we'll keep this. We should ask someone who actually speaks yeah, Japanese. Yeah, we should find someone who it. speaks Japanese because it, it may be wrong. What happens at 3 o'clock, though? 3,000 RPM. Three on the clock. Oh! Genius. Um, let's go to the hotel. Let's get our bags and let's begin this road trip of extreme phasmagorical excitement I'm and so supercharged, Dude, turbocharged. You did, you did so well. This Thank is you, amazing. Man. Have you noticed that every car that I buy sight unseen is incredible? No. Oh, okay. Let's go. We should actually find someone who can speak Japanese and actually get them to read this because it might say something actually important. Actually useful about our car. But what we've gathered so far is that it's got a blown engine and that the wheels scrub. Oh, yeah, the wheels do, oh, the wheels do scrub. Is that right? Oh, there's, oh, stop. there's a little car behind us thing. Oh, no power steering. Watch out for these JDM <laughs> legends. Oh man, they almost ran over, ran over us. All right, let's go. Let's go get our bags and hit the road, mate. We're in Osaka, which is the third biggest city in Japan and one of the largest metropolitan areas in the world. It's known for its vibrant food, underground shopping centres and cosmopolitan nightlife. We're going to be taking our little Nissan Super Turbo on a road trip to Tokyo, but first we've got to get out of the centre of the city and find ourselves a parts shop. Pretty good. Oh, we've got to fix that scrubbing. That scrubbing's bad. I wonder if the wheels were put on like to sell it or something, you know? I yeah, don't I don't know you could live with that. No. It feels pretty good. It does have a sort of like a hesitation. Okay. When you accelerate through, but I mean these always feel a bit weird because it goes from supercharger to turbo. Yeah. And then back again. But is um, the hesitation at three o'clock? Maybe let like the is. traffic go forward a little bit and then see if you can give it a little bit, a little hit and we'll just see what happens. Might not be that obvious in first, but... Oh yeah, you can sort of... Yeah, it doesn't yeah. feel too bad though. That's all right. It'd probably be worse in higher gears, I'd say. Generally are. There's so much going on with that engine. So many vacuum lines and yeah, yeah. wires and it was right at the beginning of people using ECUs. So it's pretty, pretty simple. So this is kind of like the King's Cross part of Osaka, so crazy nightlife uh, last night. Lots of stuff going down on the street. Clown masks for sale over there with really big holes in the mouth. I don't know what you meant to do with those. Um, lots of weird little photo boards and menus and people relieving themselves on the street. I have seen a bit of that. I saw a guy who was like completely doubled over um, in a big pile of vomit. Um, also, interestingly, a lot of these places don't open till 10 or 11, and then they don't shut till 10 or 11. Well, that, so makes, the... that makes a lot of sense. I mean, in Sydney, come five o'clock, heaps of the shops are just closed. Yeah. They're done. You can't yep. do anything. That's right. 
That's just pretty cool. And at night, this would just be buzzing with people, man. The nightlife in Osaka is world-renowned for its crazy clubs, amazing food and friendly people. It's also considerably cheaper than Tokyo, and some people attribute this to Osaka originally being a merchant city full of people looking for a bargain, and that philosophy has remained to this day. People from Osaka are particularly proud of their heritage and have a slightly different dialect to that heard in Tokyo. There's some other strange differences too, like the use of escalators. Throughout Japan, people stand on the left, yet in Osaka, for reasons nobody really knows, people stand on the right. There are some theories around samurais drawing swords and merchants protecting their money, but even in Japan, it's a real mystery. Of course, there's the usual Japanese array of vending machines absolutely everywhere, where you can get everything from cold drinks, hot drinks, and even hot food. Yet it seems a lot of people at night time mistake these vending machines for a public toilet. Is that you with the accelerator or is that the car uh, kind of it's pumping a, and it's surging? A, it's a bit jerky at low speeds anyway. The clutch is super light, so I'm also getting used to it. Yeah. Because you don't hardly need effort on your left foot. And the accelerator is a bit... I don't know, it's just an old car. 29 years old, man. Did your last one have air conditioning? I don't remember. That's cool. Hello. Some Japanese girls waved at us, Martin, because they love your car. Everyone loves super turbos, man. They were just slipping over in everybody's tears because everyone was crying that they didn't buy this. That's and right. we did. From some random at a family mart. So we have got an epic road adventure over the next few days of hundreds of kilometers. That's a weird thing. It's bizarre. Wow. Um, and as such, uh, we're gonna give the car a little once over before we go. So we're gonna try and find ourselves uh, an auto box or an up garage or something like that. Um, give the car a bit of a service, see if we can find out why it's not running as well as it should. And what else? Yeah, it's got a little, Maybe some wheels. little hesitation. We might see if we can um, get some either some different wheels or potentially just some different tires because yep. those tires are so fat and we don't have anything in the boot. It's just us, so it, it will scrub. Yeah. So we get we'll solve the scrubbing thing, roll the guards if we have to, but I think wheels and tires might solve it easier. I reckon it's a bit of a mystery about that scrubbing because the car is in such good condition. I don't reckon the previous owner would have been driving it around like that. So no. I reckon it had some fancy yeah. wheels on it, and they just put these on to, to get the car solved. It. Absolutely. Um, well, I will find out where there's something that we can go buy some stuff. Auto backs, yellow hat, up garage. We will end up visiting all these places throughout this <laughs> trip, worry. by the way. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll go to all of them and buy some mad stuff for you and us, mainly us. Driving in another country can be pretty confronting. Luckily for us, Japan and Australia both drive on the left-hand side of the road, use kilometres, not miles, and steer from the right-hand side of the car. The street signs also have what's known as romanji, where the Japanese words are spelled out using an alphabet we can read and understand. With this and a good GPS, finding your way around is way easier than it once was. As long as you've got yourself an international driver's license, you're good to go. So we've arrived at Super Auto Backs, the creative car life store. I want to go to the technical service pit. This is amazing, it's huge. Oh, I don't know if I've ever seen one this big. This is like Bunnings size of car stuff, but this is the biggest one I've ever seen. This is crazy. It's the, like the supercharger valve, isn't it, that normally um, flogs out on these? They all do. It's, it's, well, it's not even connected properly, but that's, that's the bypass control valve, and that's the vacuum line that's supposed to go into it. But it has been on there. You can see by the mark like that it, it has, it's not like it's just come off permanently, but you can see yeah, yeah. how, you know, not connected that is. But also, like, these vacuum lines have perished. Yeah, half so of them will be leaking. Split. So I suggest if we can get vacuum lines, it's just like replace all the ones we can see. It's yeah. definitely not going to hurt it. It was an easy thing to try. So vacuum lines, spark plugs, yeah. do the oil because we can. Yep. Try and find some skinnier tires so we're not scrubbing. That's a start, man. And then we, and just, then, see and we, then we just see how we go. Do you go. know how many more auto backs are in Japan if we fail? Probably a lot. So many. Let's go and have a look, <laughs> man. So many cars for sale. I've never noticed how many and cars. Bikes. Secondhand cars and bikes and mad little lunchbox looking nuggets. This place is massive. <sighs> oh, we Look gotta buy some stuff. tools that we don't need while Dude, we're here. Dude, this is massive! Whoa! Oh. 
showing. Car stores in Japan are loud, bright and full to the brim with parts and accessories to modify your car. Customising and personalising cars is a big deal here, so there's an endless supply of ways to do it. Being that there are so many different models of cars from VIP cruisers through to tiny K-vans, the parts shop stock items for just about all of them. There's less stuff available for older cars as the idea of newness is appealing in both the cars themselves and the mods. There's less mechanical parts available on the shelf as trade and retail is more segregated, but we've managed to find some vacuum hose which will help address some of the issues with our little car. So even if we went to a 165 in Bridgestone, I mean that's cool. And that's still a good size for the car. 165 though is only going to be by 65. 10 mil, but also drops the profile. So we lose 10 millimeters off the width. Yep. And 50 or 44. It's it's still better than nothing, and even if it still scrubs, at least we're not trying to fit massive tires under. That said, you know? 15 mil is fairly substantial to yeah. be lower rolling diameter. Hopefully yeah. that'll get us out of trouble. Might tuck it in. Saves us having to cut your arches, Martin, that's with an right. angle grinder. Yeah, the width is like, it's 5% less width, less sidewall, less circumference. So this aisle here is basically some of the crazy stuff that we found when we bought cars from Japan. They just have so much wacky stuff like these cans down here that say this is an LED lighted ashtray. Please smoke in the shape of a Coke can. I mean, it's just like who thinks of it and then who makes it and then who actually makes it and then who buys it. Uh, smoking is a really big thing in Japan. Like people are smoking everywhere and this whole aisle is just smoky things. I think this, instead of a funnel, I think that there is meant to connect to the top of that. And so instead of using a funnel, you just connect that big long hose and then just tip the other end in. That's not a thing that we get in Australia at all, which is why I'm gonna buy it. So down here, um, shoe trays, something else that you don't see in Australia. This is so you can take your shoes off before you get into your car, keeping your car nice and clean and mad. And there are heaps of different sizes, heaps of different kinds. Again, something that you just never see in Australia because, well, because this is not Australia. So over here, obviously, you've got your spare flares just casually hanging here, which we're not going to be able to get back to Australia, but it would be fun if we could but we should get some just to light while we're over here in case there's an emergency. All sorts of crazy lights. Your block shot, of course, whatever that is. <laughs> um, just need oil drain pan and I think we're good to go. All right, so, tires. We found some tires. So they've asked me to drive the car in. We've found some bridge stones that'll fit a bit better. Someone has put aftermarket wheels on this thing, uh, which means we're getting some scrubbing issues which is a pain in the bum. But we should be all right if we can just reduce our tire size a little bit. Um, the tires are actually a lot fatter than they need to be. Uh, so we're gonna go one size smaller um, and tires are really easy to get at Autobacks. There's tons of them. And unlike Australia, they have K-car sizes, which is freaking amazing because trying to get tires for the mirror, next to impossible, particularly performance tires like the RE003s. They just, I mean, People don't have performance K cars really, they're just like the cars that you drive to the shops. So, I'm gonna drive our Super Turbo into the technical service pit, and you can come with us. The service areas are super well equipped for the fast turnaround of hundreds of customers that descend upon the shop all at once. There is a huge amount of attention to detail, possibly too much for us. Because our wheels aren't the factory size, we can't actually put the factory specified March Super Turbo tyres on the car, which is worrying the technicians. They may not actually change our tyres for us, potentially. Because they won't want us to put the wrong size on, even though these are not the right size anyway. Let's see what happens. Oh, 
ノーマルサイズはなんかよくもうわからん状態なんですよ The current vibe is we're still not sure if they're going to let us put the tyres that we want on aftermarket wheels. It's very much a buy the book thing. You know, we don't want to put tyres on that aren't supposed to be in the car. Fair enough for insurance and everything else, except this has already got aftermarket wheels and the size we're going to go is better. I think we're going to get there. I'm feeling good. It does feel like a test, but I'm feeling good about it. All right, we're going to leave the car here. Hopefully, we're going to get it back with some new tyres. If we don't, we're just going to have to try somewhere else. So one of the options you've got for horns over here is 400 hertz, 500 hertz, 600 hertz, which is giving you your tonic, a major third, or a fifth, and together you actually get a major third. Pretty cool, hey? So before Marty, when I was looking for an oil pan, I was going, oh, I wonder how you say oil pan. I was thinking maybe I just add like a oot to the end of it. Oil and so pan I got like oil pan. Uh, uh, oil pan. Uh, um, for this. Uh, and then I looked at the translator. It's oil pan. Oil pan. Yeah, <laughs> great. Amazing. <laughs> So we just put a couple of Bridgestones on. These are for compact car, uh, and this is a compact car. Um, you can see the fitment here. They are in a little bit, and they're down by about 15 mil. So hopefully that fixes our scrubbing issue that we're having up the back, because we don't really want to be heading down the highway um, scrubbing the whole way. I know some people think scrubbing is life and the low life and all that kind of crap, but that sound of scrubbing is like the sound of your tire getting ripped apart, so that's not ideal. So we got two on, they're putting two more on, and then we're gonna hit the road and head down to Up Garage. We're gonna buy some other bits and pieces. Then we're gonna give the car a service, and then we're on the highway and the road trip can begin. We're lucky they agreed to change the tires considering how strict they can sometimes be. A friend of ours in Japan needed a new battery for his key fob and the dealer refused to supply it because the car had aftermarket wheels installed which didn't meet the company's specifications. This is one of the strange paradoxes of Japan. There's a real sense of freedom in how people express themselves and how they modify their car. But this is in stark contrast to what is often a very conservative and rule-based society. A previous owner has fitted some aftermarket alloy wheels. They look great but are smaller in diameter than the factory steel wheels with hubcaps that you would have gotten on your car way back in 1992. Regardless, we've managed to talk our way into a new set of tyres which are now fitted to our mad little Nissan. So you can see over here because they're getting inside the car they've put a, um, a bag over the seat and there's also a wrap around the steering wheel that kind of looks like a hairnet or something to keep it all nice and clean. That fitment um, is so much better. you'll also um, they check the torque, which you don't often see in Australia on a wrench like that. They often set their tools like that, but yep. they don't go and do a second check. And they do it in front of the customer as well, to go, yes, our torques are correct. That fitment is so much better. It doesn't look as big and fat, but considering we won't be scraping when we're driving down the highway, and they're actually the right size tyres for those wheels, you can see, because they're not bulging out anymore as much. Because the It'll be to do with the actual width of the wheel. It's probably like a six inch wheel. You're not really going, supposed to go such a big tire on a small wheel. I, um, I think that's going to be a good thing. I think we're good to go, people. I think we're good to hit the road. Yeah. We can't tell if it doesn't scrub yet, but we're about to be able to tell. I hope it doesn't. It can't scrub the same. No. With like 15 mil less no. rolling diameter. These are the right size tires for these wheels. And so you reckon these... this car has been lowered then? Yes, I do. I reckon it has. Arigato gozaimasu. Arigato gozaimasu. What a legend. Auf Wiedersehen. So polite, so friendly. What a legend. Awesome. Let's change some vacuum lines and then hit the road, man. With some tools and parts in hand from Autobacks, it's time to try and solve the misfiring mystery in our mad little car. Owners of March Super Turbos and enthusiasts over the years have worked out that the Achilles heel of this otherwise very tough car is the vacuum system. It controls the way the supercharger and turbo work together, and if something's wrong with it, it makes it hesitate, misfire, and just generally slows it down. It's usually just due to the age of the rubber parts, which do have a limited lifespan, so replacing them can get you all your lost power back. It would be amazing if that fixed it. Oh, it'd be so good if that fixed it. It, 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 it idles and puts around fine, so it's hard to tell until you actually get up it. Yeah. But let's just see, we'll just do a lap of the block. No scrubbing? 
No scrubbing, man. We might have fixed that. First key feels good. That felt good. Left down here. I think it's still got a slight hesitation, but I can't quite tell. Still run down here in second and we'll see. It's there, but it's not as bad. No, it's not as bad. Not nearly as bad. So that could be maybe when we get to up garage, yep. suss out that spark plug that's probably never been changed in the last decade or two. That valve, from if my memory serves me correctly as well, that valve, when it's worn out, behaves like that. Yeah, okay. It flutters and sort of doesn't doesn't work properly. So we're but in first the right gear, place to buy another one. The first gear feels good. Either way, I can accelerate. Oh, that feels good. I can like, you can actually now. drive it around now. Yeah, I couldn't accelerate probably before, and now I can. So I'm going to call that a win. All right. Well, let's head on down the up garage. It's good, man. It's got a bit of poke now. I'll just get some curry first, actually. Can oh, I get some curry? so keen for some curry. Let's do it. Oh, what is that STI? Look, look at that. Look at that thing, dude. So fat. That is fat. So good. Wood own. So we're down here at our Coco Curry House. This is like a staple down here. It's a bit of rice. A bit of fried stuff and happily just like fried tasty stuff our car feels a bit better i don't know it's 100 percent, but it feels heaps better it feels heaps better so, so i think we're, we're ready to hit the road hurry up then we're going to hit up garage and then we can start our road trip we sort of are road tripping i guess so uh itchy uh, caesar salad itchy corn salad i got the little bit ashy Super actually, that means like awesome. Oh, great. How hungry. are you? No, that's not <laughs> correct. No? no. Okay. Oh. So good. After lunch, our next stop is one of our favorite destinations in Japan. road for another 25 k's or so and it wouldn't be a proper JDM road trip of course without proper JDM snacks we haven't done a full snack run yet no but I did have time this morning to get a couple of snacks um, I have seaweed flavored peas no and I think what's gonna excite Martin a little bit more is meat flavored pizza yeah just look at it no just... it's, it's pizza meat meaty pizza flat no meaty pizza flavored Chips. I don't know why these exist or need to exist, but I'm happy that they exist and that someone went to the effort to make them. They're amazing. Can you crack them open? Japanese chips are hard to open. Try opening them how you open Aussie ones. See how hard it is? Oh. You got to do it oh. a different way. Oh, just punched in the face with the pungence. Give me a. Can you smell oh. it? It's, it's that no, Japanese. Is your face taste. doing that like tingly thing yet where yeah. it's tingling? Look at them. Look how big they are. Man, look at the bits of stuff on them. Oh, it tastes like a pizza. In Australia, you buy a chip. It tastes like day-old pizza, doesn't it? That doughy, meaty, cheesy, fatty, and really strong cheese too. Like, mm. oh! But it tastes exactly like it looks on the packet, which is both frightening and amazing. Unlike Australian chips, they go, "That's barbecued paprika," and you taste it. It's like that's just MSG and salt. Mm. Whereas in Japan, what you see is what you get. Like the super turbo. Look at that car! What is that Holy thing? Holy shit! What is that thing? <laughs> I've never seen one of those in the wild before. I didn't know they you actually just, drove. You shifted into fifth, that's how excited you are. I didn't know they actually drove. Far wow. out, man. Someone's cruising around in that stanced out revolution thing. That camber was like. That was mental. It was like the stuff you see on the internet. Yeah, but usually in car parks, not driving. That's crazy. Oh, we're about to go into a tunnel, Martin. Yes. 
tunnel run, tunnel run, tunnel, tunnel, tunnel run, tunnel run, where you downshift and do a tunnel run. Lay it on me, man. Like, I'll just, just lay it on me. And proceed. That was awesome. You should celebrate with a pizza chip. Oh, that was so good. Um, Martin, would you like to have a joke off session? Yep. All right. It's too, too windy. The subject of today's joke off is, man, there's so many secondhand cars. Let's make it dealerships. I'm going to go first. Yep. Did you hear about the man that went into a commercial vehicles dealership and said, I want a free vehicle. And they turned around and said, no nah, man, no trucks given. That was pretty good. Out of 10? Six. six. No, I don't go for six. seven. Really? I'm going right. for seven. It's, I'd give it six for the setup, but like eight for the punchline, which averages to seven. Oh, that's pretty good. I think we should both score each other's joke off ability. Why was the, why was the van Dealer, why was the Toyota van dealer so good at poker? Because, oh, what a stealing, he stole everyone's money? No, because he knew a lot about the high ace. Oh. Okay. I'm going to give that a four out of ten. Wow, brutal. Um, I know. No, only, that's because I want to inspire you, because you've got, you've got, you've got better. All right. You've got better. Um, let me see. Oh, did you hear about the car that went to the doctor? Cause his leg numbed. Five. His leg was numb. Five. See? Why was the sea captain disappointed when he tried to buy a car? Because it was full of semen. <laughs> 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 That's exactly what I was gonna say. <laughs> no, sorry, what's what's the answer? No, I really want to know. Because it was a dealership. A dealership. That's pretty good. Thanks, man. That's pretty good. That's like a five and a half. Okay, I've just got a really bad one to finish. No, off. do it. No, it's, it. no, it's not even funny. Oh mine. Um, why did the Nissan? Keep beating a drum like because it was a Nissan March. Do you want to talk about something else now? So this next stop will be my favorite place to go in Japan for used car stuff. We go there every time, it is no surprise. This is Up Garage. This is where you get mad secondhand JDM mods for your ride. Um, and what are we hoping to get here, Martin? We want to get the honk, don't we? This is real deal. So I'm hoping we'll be able to pick up some Nissan style airflow meter slash pod filter adapter. Yes. And this, they just have so much stuff and they have all the stuff for when you are modifying an old car. Yes. Um, this is a place to go because Autobax is glitzy and shiny and good for new stuff. This, this is, is good like for the, the kind of car stuff. we're in. And your your um, your girlfriend from a long time ago hated the old honk. Didn't love the honk, so we got to, we have to bring the honk and back. And that's why we're bringing May or may back. not have been Cheryl. We're bringing honky back. Cheryl's Sorry, coming that's at all you. I had. Um, let's go, man. Up garage for life. So mad. Look at it. Look at it, dude. Such Mad a nugget. I can't believe it. It's such, such a mad uh, nugget. Nugget. I love up garage. Because all these wheels will fit. Up Garage is a must-visit destination every time we come to Japan. 
There's nothing else like it in the world where you can browse such a huge selection of second-hand car parts for your Japanese performance car. And best of all, it's usually really cheap. Unfortunately, occasionally with Up Garage, due to the fact that they are second hand, you can't really rely on what kind of stock is going to be here because it changes so often. Um, we can't get a pod filter. There's one pod filter and it's for a Daihatsu, but there's no way it's going to fit our car. So we're probably just going to try the next one we see or any other automotive parts shop we see, we're going to stop at and try and get some bits. I didn't find anything either, by the way. Whatever, dude. <laughs> so full of shit. We're making our way through to Iga Prefecture, about two hours east of Osaka. The B roads that run alongside the rivers and lakes are stunning, and if the engineers couldn't hug the mountain when they made the road, they would dig straight through the side of the hill, resulting in some huge tunnels. Nothing is getting in the way of a great driving road. So we were just driving down the road on our way to Iga Prefecture um, and saw this place which I just had to stop at and in a second you'll understand why. It also gave us an opportunity to pull over and have a look because we are going to attempt to disconnect the supercharger because the little march is still not running right and Marty's actually looking at a diagram that we got translated by a Japanese friend 10 years ago from his last super turbo um, and it was a Japanese diagram that we got and we used that translation to fix something so he's on the net watching some old Mighty Car Mod stuff to actually work out how to fix that but why are we here? Well I was just driving along and randomly we came across this We usually associate the classic mini scene with Britain, but in Japan, minis are huge. I mean, they're tiny, but these little cars are absolutely everywhere. While in most countries, the market for minis waned in the 90s, in Japan, it went absolutely through the roof and they continued selling these Japanese market minis or these JDM minis right up until around the year 2000. That's before the newer BMW minis, also known as Maxis, got made. Um, but they sold so many of these minis in Japan. And this is where I got my JDM mini from. I've got kind of a British racing green one that's since been converted with a B16B, which is um, a 1.6 litre engine from a Civic Type R, but this is just not something that you see. This is just a playground of mad mini stuff. I mean, I've never seen anything like this, and you just would not expect to see something like this in Japan. Look how many there are. Look at them. And this is only half of it. There's a whole other one right up there. There's just minis, 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 as far as the eye can see. There's mad ones that are dumped. They got big wheels, some have got mini lights, some have got other weird JDM wheels. There's some like more British inspired ones. 
This is just freaking incredible. Part of the reason that these cars are so popular in Japan is that from the beginning, minis were always a car that people wanted to personalize and modify. It's in the DNA of the design, and this fits perfectly with the sensibility of Japanese people who want to customize their cars. The mini scene is so big over here that you often see more modified minis on the road than some of the more traditional Japanese performance cars that you associate with this country, like Supras, MR2s and Civics. But just like the R34 GTR, prices of these minis has recently gone through the roof. A few years ago, a clean example like this could be picked up for around $5,000. Now prices for a similar vehicle are closer to $25,000. What an awesome treat to see all of these mad old minis here just outside of Osaka in Japan. Meanwhile, over here, the car is getting a couple of stickers to celebrate that we have fixed our kind of stuttering intermittent problem, not by doing anything awesome, but by bypassing the supercharger. Now, I do feel a little bit bad that I've bought him a car that doesn't entirely work, but these are just the little niggles of buying an old JDM car. Everyone who owns one knows that is the way that it goes. But for now, um, we are getting some chop fingers on as we slowly mighty oh. modify this car. Oh no, oh, no. we've had a blowout. Oh, he's gonna, he's gonna fix it. There we go, amazing. Just like the um, supercharger, man. So the supercharger has been bypassed just so that we can do some highway driving because on the way out here we had to do some hills and stuff and going up it was really starting to uh, <laughs> and so now we've taken that off which means the car's really laggy but when you do get on song it gets on song hard because it's still running crazy boost on the turbocharger but we might do a swing past um, our mate Rob's garage at Import Monster and that will give us a chance to actually pull some stuff off and have a look with some proper tools. We don't have everything we need to do that now. So the next step is just jump back in the car, get on the highway and make our way to Iga Prefecture. Are you driving or am I driving? I'll rock, You're paper, driving. scissors you for it. You're driving. One, two, three. I, oh, you always do chops. Yeah, I know. Drive. Okay. Look at this dude. Yes. Oh, yes. 1476021B00. What's that, mate? That's the part number of the bit that will probably fix our issue with our supercharger. Do it's they the, still make them? It's the bypass control valve, otherwise known as the UFO. Do you know how I know that? No. I looked up a micro forum and I found a post by myself from almost exactly 10 years ago <laughs> that says, this is the part number and when it's broken, this is what it does, which is exactly what our car's doing. Okay. And then when you fix it by either heating it up in an oven or sending it around the world in the mail, which I assume it sits somewhere really hot for a bit in Arab Emirates or whatever. And then you get it, and then you plug it in, it works again. Okay. So we basically get a heat gun, and we blast it. I have a, I have a feeling they don't make this part anymore. Okay. Because this was, I mean, they barely made it 10 years ago. There's no way they're going to make it now. Okay. So well, The idea, though, ask. is it gets clogged full of stuff, right? So yeah. the bi it can't actually bypass because there's crap in the way. Yeah, it's like a little... little um, uh, diaphragm in there, rubber diaphragm, and yep. if it gets clogged full of all the oil that's in the, you know, aging motor is pumping oil through its vacuum system, yeah, um, it's going to get clogged up. So I reckon we try and heat gut it. We've got nothing to lose. I mean, we have now we have a turbo car, yes, which is cool, but this is a super turbo, and the yes. super means supercharged, yeah. So we got to try and make it work. Okay. When are we going to do that? When I finish looking up parts diagrams <laughs> in, the, <laughs> in the middle of the Japan roads. Uh, but at least we do have boost. But because there's no supercharge that's meant to kind of take off that lagginess, I'll show you just how laggy it is. Watch this when I go around this corner. I'll just plant it in first. Wait for the lag, here you go. Plant it. Nothing, nothing, nothing. There's the boost. Oh, it comes on four and a half. Four and a half grand. So. It's a big turbo for a little engine, actually. It's a, H, it? it's a HT10, which is way too big for a four cylinder one liter. It's probably good for like a 1.3 or 1.5. Yeah. Okay. So you've got all that extra lag trying to spin it up, but normally the supercharger is making the engine more efficient, which brings the turbo on quicker. Yeah. Well, at least we have a turbocharger. We do. That's better than no turbocharger Absolutely. at all. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a bit trippy looking at old forum posts from yourself. It's so weird. Because all the questions I'm sort of asking, I'm going on forums and doing that usual dance, I keep looking it up and then my name comes up. <laughs> 
and like some of the posts are really good and some of them are like, who's this dickhead? And then I realize it's me. <laughs> it's really bad. It's like, I wouldn't answer that guy either. <laughs> As the sun sets on our first day of road tripping, we pass by Iga Castle and the Iga Ryu Ninja Museum. But on the other side of the highway, it's all big industry. Some of the biggest names in the car scene have factories here, often the size of a small suburb. They sit alongside rice paddies, farms, shops, homes, and even castles. So filling up with petrol or gas is slightly different in Japan than it is to Australia. Uh, it's actually similar to the way that it's done in America, which is that you've got to prepay it first, even though you don't know exactly how much you need, which can be a little bit confusing. So what you want to do if you're paying with cash, you hit this one. If you're paying with a card, you hit this one, and then you lift up the flap, and you slide your card in, it's gonna read it and it's gonna go, hey, we read your card, it's gonna give it back to you, thank you very much. Once you've taken the card, then it's gonna say, uh, it's this gonna thing flash. which is, is basically gonna flash a bunch of stuff in case you need some change. I don't quite understand what that means. Disco light is what that is. Anyway, then you choose what power you want. Of course, the V power, which is, what is this, high octane? But I don't know it'll what the octane 90, is here. It'll be 93. Don't they I'm do higher sure. than that over here? Um, don't they have like 100 octane or something? Anyway, that's we want question. that one. That's a good question, we want actually. that one. That's the highest, that's what matters. And now it tells us, put take your gloves the cap on. off. It says, put your gloves on. My gloves are on, mate. Take that off. And off we go. Now, I don't know what this is saying, but it's going in. It's going so up, that's good. all that matters. Now, if you pay with cash, here's the weird thing. You put a large amount of cash in, and then it'll actually print you out a little docket that's got a QR code and then you take that to another machine and that gives you your change as cash. 10 bucks got us seven liters. It seems a bit convoluted, but once you've done it once, you're, you're all good. <laughs> so there we go, we are done. Oh, it smells so good. It smells totally different to our fuel. Uh, we've got about another hour, a bit over an hour of driving to do. We're in Iga City at the moment. Um, we're about an hour from Matsusaka and so first thing tomorrow morning we're going to try and drop in on our friend Rob at Import Monster because he has a workshop with tools in it. Our little March currently is just a March turbo, not a super turbo. We want to try and restore some of that superness to it by fixing our supercharging system. Um, here you go. So that was um, 3,093 yen which is around 30 American dollars for 20 litres. Yep. So that's probably 35... $38 Australian approximately for 20 litres. It's pretty similar to home. It's quite, it's expensive actually, but um, that's why you drive little efficient cars. Yeah. It's still 30 years old and still feel efficient. That's amazing. Crazy. All right, back on the road and let's get to it, man. Let's just boost our way out. It's, it feels so weird not going into the shop. I feel like we're meant to, but no, we're actually just scootily doodling out of here, man. Boosting down the street like there's no tomorrow. Don't be that guy and don't forget to reset my counter. Oh, okay, I will. Are you allowed to do burnouts out of here? Oh. So it's an uh, early and chilly morning. It's brisk, man. And it Winter was a smoking evening. It was so smoky in a hotel. So over here, you're still allowed to smoke in your hotel now. I don't smoke, you can but the darry thousand on. people that you can, stayed in there before me did smoke. You can just darry on all night if you want to. Uh, so it's time to get the breakfast of champions, which of course is available here at the 7-Eleven. What, what do you reckon that's for? That's for cleaning your butthole, mate. I reckon it is too. It's a special butthole lollipop. Um, They've got a Xerox machine over here. Oh, you don't see many of those anymore. Super convenient. Um, so you can get all sorts of fresh and packaged foods over here, such as these delightful things. That's, no doubt that's when we have fish more or time, squid. there'll be a big snack thing. That just looks like pieces of garlic there. Um, but that's over wine. here, if we're lucky, um, it doesn't look like they've done the morning stock yet, Martin, but we can still get ourselves some Grape deliciousness. Drink. Oh no, it's blueberry, it's a blueberry shake. Like, look, bacon bits, man. Do you want some bacon bits some for breakfast? Some kind of weird sandwiches. What about some premium, it, seven premium is ever evolving, more tasty, more affordable dairy foods. Look at that. What I don't know that? what that is, but I don't want it. What about that and that together? What is that, Martin, that you've got they're, there? They're little Frankfurts. Um, I'm gonna get myself some little JDM breakfast over here. We've got some oh, yes. octopus, there's some seaweed. Dude, this spicy there's cucumber. Tuna mayonnaise. JDM spicy cucumber is like a deal break, like a, just a, Game changer. A pickled plum, Martin. A pickled plum. I'm going to eat a pickled plum for breakfast. Sounds really good. What are you going to get, mate? I'm going to get some kind something. of something. It's my shout today. Is it my really? Treat. Thanks, dude. I get myself some edamame. Oh, let's get the pickled cucumber. It's 
spicy cucumber is amazing. The spicy cucumber for breakfast. There we go. I want a mad drink of some description. Uh, the drinks are up the back. They've got, um, there's obviously lots of hot drinks in Japan. They've got wine and, they and sell sake. alcohol everywhere. Oh, which is weird because in Australia they don't sell alcohol kind of anywhere. Check out the milkshakes. You can just buy a beer if you want. Look at all that. In the fridge. What's zero, zero cal cider? I don't know what that oh, is. That's all booze. This is all booze. Grape booze. Is it? There's some weird teas, some weird hot or cold coffee drinks. Where are just the normal drinks at? Over there. Are they? Yeah, there's juices and stuff here. Yeah, I want like a healthy popper juice. Yeah, these do. Look, go. All the vegetable juices, orange and fruity mango ones, a grape one. Oh, grape ones are so good. What do you good. reckon that is? What do you reckon Niji is? Turn it up, you'll be able to see the liquid. Is it clear? No, it's milky. Oh. Oh, Niji make milk and chocolates and stuff. Is it? Oh. Good or bad? I think I want to. Oh, dude, I want a fruit and vegetable drink. That looks healthy. Is that good? No good? No good. I'm just kidding. I'm going to buy it. <laughs> it's delicious. All right. Let's go get this thing done, Martin. Look at that. Some delicious. Oh, I want a pastry. For the morning. Look at the pastries. Okay. That just, I mean, that just looks tasty to me. I don't, I'm not sure about all of them. Marty, do you want me to pay for yours as well, mister? Yes, please. That's, that just looks too okay. good. That, I can't. Spicy fish egg cheese snacks. Together. Uh, together. Yeah. I got the eyes. Well, oh, you're paying, awesome. Thank so, you. So, Martin, we're gonna fix the car today. We're gonna try. We're actually gonna we're get We're gonna do it our best to fix it. With um, the limited tools. You can't actually get most of the um, parts required are no longer in production. Which so is why we got to do some it. DIY hacks. Yeah, you got to hack good. it, backyard it, DIY it, until we can get home and, and yeah. go again. Because there's no Haltex and stuff here that'll plug It'll in and fix, and fix it. So we go to Import Monster now, yeah. get on the tools, yep. do what we can, yep. because we do have hit some track time coming up. Um, and then and, hit the road. And hopefully we want to get some super turboing as we go. Yep. Uh, and then we're going to hit the road and continue the road trip. Yep. Arigato. All right. Let's do it. Let's hit the road, man. Dude, I'm pretty excited to hoe into Did you want a taste of this? Can I smell it? It um, kind of, it oh, smells no. a little bit like um, reconstituted camel semen. <laughs> like that time we were in Central oh, Australia. Remember when we were in Central that's Australia? Not good. And oh. that camel was there and he opened yes, the bonnet? I do, I do remember that. Is that how you know? Anyway. But I'm going to wash it down, Martin, with some pickled plum. Now, this is a three stage in, eating process. It's in seaweed. Of course, um, I love these things. Every time I come here, you tear down the middle. Then oh, you, you don't go end up with a little plate. Number two. Then you go number three. This is amazing. And this then I've juice. got a little seaweedy pocket of pickled plum ready to be devoured. What's actually in the middle of that? Is it just a rice? A pickled plum. Inside the rice. See? Is it? <laughs> <laughs> do you want some of this to watch? This is so good. Do you want, the, uh, do you want some edamame? I'm going to wash it down with the camel. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I usually like those things. This is awesome. This is like carrot, tomato, <sighs> cucumber, no, not yeah, <sighs> cucumber, capsicum, mango, and banana. Martin, what a combination. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a crack at the, um, the old pickled cucumber. It is a beautiful day. <laughs> Look at it, man. Blue skies. 7-Eleven. It's fantastic. Not a tree to be seen. No, I can see one tree. Not many trees Not and many plants trees. in Japanese towns, I've no. noticed. Look at this pickled cucumber go. Oh, have you had that before? That's so damn incredible. good. You want beef? No, it doesn't go with my juice. Mm. No, I'll have it for dinner. That's no, really good. Uh, How good is that? I could just eat that all day. Let's go. No. Bit fishy. <coughs> so fishy. Don't forget your Meiji. Oh. Summer found its way onto our faces. And we had it all. Thankful.
we have to fix our car. We can't drive a super turbo across Japan on just turbo. It's not cool. So today we're going to have our one big shot at getting it fixed. We've got a mate called Rob who runs a shop called Import Monster. He exports JDM parts all over the world and he's sent us a bunch of cool stuff over the years so we get pretty excited when we see him. It was a deviation from our mapped out trip but worth it for some proper tool. So the idea today is to try and get the supercharger working again. And Martin knows how to do it via well, the UFO, well, via information that he posted on the internet 10 years ago. I know how to do it, but I don't know that it's actually going to work. But I've got my fingers crossed yep. and my... Everything is everything's crossed. crossed and I'm, I'm just hoping that we can do it. There's also some other stuff that while we're here and we have tools because on the road you just don't have the same equipment as Rob's going to have, yep. is we're going to pull all this off and we're going to do this nasty spark plug that's buried under basically everything yeah that's your job yeah um, i'm gonna try and fix this ufo there's a few tricks to try and get it to work but i need to mark where everything goes because if it's not put back in the same way that i take it apart we might not even be able yep. to move it's possible though that because all the vacuum lines are black it's not actually plumbed correctly yeah. already because right. it used to be color coded now it's not yep so there are a couple of hacks that you yourself helped develop and or popularize to do with that ufo um, to do with heating it, baking it, all sorts of weird stuff to clean the stuff out of yeah. it. So I think between cleaning that and between doing the spark plugs. Yeah, it's, like, a, it's about the best we can do. We just give it a general once over, clean it up, like get rid of, like there's just schmutz on everything. Just tidy it up a little bit, which, which always helps, broken things. And that's, that's as good as we're going to get with our brand new parts. And guess what you cannot get for this car anymore? That thing? No, nothing. Oh, nothing. No, no brand new parts, man. It's almost 30 years old, it just doesn't exist. So we do as best we can and then we hit the road again. Cool, man. Well, yeah, let's borrow some parts from Rob and just get to it. Awesome. So if we can get this working, this car sounds freaking amazing, but it sounds even better with a pod filter. So we've just found this Nugget drift car here, which is not running at the moment. Um, it's just sitting here in the lot. Um, it does have a pod filter on it, which means it's got this Nissan pod filter adapter. So we're gonna take that off and see if we can fit that on the super turbo. And then we'll be getting some mad supercharger honk and some awesome turbo intake noises as we continue our mad road trip. I think we found the problem. Really? Yeah. What is it? There's a vacuum hose completely obliterated, just split, totally munted. So right. we fixed that and, and we couldn't have got to it without pulling all the intercooler and stuff off. We couldn't have even seen it. Oh, it's it. up this end? It's, com it's under where your intercooler is. Wow. Well, Crazy. meanwhile, I am, um, I'm pilfering Are you stealing this. Rob's parts? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the drift car doesn't oh. work, believe it or not. Do you reckon this will fit? Well, it should do. You're, You're saying they're those, all similar, right? I'm using one of these epic JDM... Um, Hex thingies? Yeah. Yeah, dude, that might fit. Um, but if it is that hose, and that's the only reason, we might be we might be good. Might be back on the road. Change the plug. Imminently. I reckon we change the plug, put it back together, test run, and if it works, put this on and then just go for it. Cool. It's literally the lowest hose in the whole bay, directly under the throttle body and under the inner cooler. Check this out. Oh wow, look at that. Like, just gone. I mean, it's leaking from this end 100%. That end might have hung on, just depends how far it's been pushed down onto the little metal pipe. But that's like, 
that's totally bone and full of oil. And no restrictor in there? I don't think it's got a restrictor. I mean, we'll know when we blow some compressed air through it, but I don't think so. And if that is the thing, that UFO that I've been talking about, that controls the valve. The valve usually just works, but yes. if the hose going to the valve is munted, that UFO can be working really hard, but it's just not getting there. Yeah, right. It's so small in here, man. Do you, do you really, really need to be in this the This is the only place that I can get the right angle to wow, get this man. fourth spark plug out. This vacuum hose. Do you is... really need to be right there? Well, this is the vacuum hose that could fix our entire car, this man. This is the spark plug that could fix our yeah, entire car. Yeah, but maybe, maybe it won't. We've got to work as a team, mate. I know, but why do? Why do can we... you stop sticking that screwdriver in my leg? Is that? It's really good. <laughs> that's, same, not, that's not a screwdriver. It's starting to get annoying, man. That's not a screwdriver. I really hope we can get this pod filter going. I just, yeah. I really want to hear that honk again. At least that's a nice filter if we, you know, if we can't find anything else. That hose, I'm just crossing my fingers that, that that is the thing that's been slowing us down. I've cleaned out the UFO, I've heated it up, I've used all the little hacks. So I'm going to put that back together. Um, but the only thing I don't have is like hose clamps and cable ties and stuff. All right. Um, Rob should have some of those anyway, I'll yeah, ask. Yeah, ask him. Rob, you got any cable ties and clamps and stuff? Cable ties. Nah, man, we used them all on the front bumper on the Skyline. Well, I might go get some then. Can I take the, um, can I take the beat? Is it currently, like, road doodling? No. You can't take the beat. Oh. Drift car, I'm assuming, is illegal? It's, on the... yeah, it's a bit off, it's... <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't, its chops. Yeah. Uh, does the STI work? The STI has a bad fuel pump. Oh. I have my international motorbike licence, can I take one of those? No. They're race bikes, aren't they? You can't take them. Okay. What about that? That is actually okay. You can take that. You can take that. NSX and this was Japan's answer to the V8 powered Ferraris of the day and what they wanted to do was make a car that would outperform a Ferrari and also cost less. It's a similar kind of strategy that Nissan used with the GTR and also way back in the day what the 240Z was meant to do to go up against the Porsche 911. Now of course this one here was made in Suzuka which is just near here and it features Honda's incredible VTEC which I will show you now and just listen to the NSX roar. I mean, that's amazing. The Honda NSX was produced in Japan between 1990 and 2005. It was a revolutionary car for its time, with its use of weight-saving aluminium, and in 1995, featured the first electronic throttle fitted in a Honda and the first production car in the world to feature titanium connecting rods and forged pistons, revving all the way to 8,300 RPM. Renowned for its handling, the suspension setup was a result of Ayrton Senna's collaboration with Honda engineers at Suzuka Circuit. All back together. Yeah, man. Back in the game. Yep, and with a pod filter. That's awesome. Stolen from a Skyline drift car. It actually fits. So those Nissan mounts are all the same? Uh, it's, it's, it's the same enough. There might be a little bit of gasket goop in there. Um, but we've cleaned everything out. I've just like airflow meter cleaned, cleaned the entire thing. Um, and just need these cable ties to put on these vacuum hoses so they don't pop off our UFO. And I think this is about as good as it's going to get. But if we do a little test drive, we'll know for sure. Hopefully we'll have some supercharger back and hopefully we won't have too much stuttering and our turbo will spool up quicker. And with that, we should have some epic honking. That NSX needs a turbo. Oh, how'd it go? Man, I, all I can say is cars have come a long way since the 80s, they are such nuggets. This is from the 80s. I know, this is a nugget as well. Yeah, but this is it awesome. Is a, is a big, it was awesome, but Wait, also a big heavy own? nugget. What would you own, a super turbo or an NSX? Ah, uh, this. Nice, Do you know answer. what NSX stands for? Not sexy something? New Sports Car X. Does it actually? And X is like the, the unknown, the mathematical unknown. It's so Japanese. Do you have the key? Nope, have you got the key? Yep, my cat key. All right, let's do this. Bring on. The girlfriend hating honk. I hope it still works, man. 
That's that great. sounds pretty good. That sounds good. The idle's a bit higher, which is not surprising if we've messed with the entire system. It's like 500 RPM higher, isn't it? That's alright. Didn't idle properly before, now it does. Oh! oh I hear... Oh, dude, let's do this. Bring on the honk! Ready? Yeah! <laughs> that is awesome! Bring it! It goes now, dude. Oh, we are back in the game. Yes. Well done. Thanks, man. Do you know what we've earned, Martin? What have we earned? We've earned a delicious JDM drink. <laughs> we are now supercharged and turbocharged and heading east through Matsusaka to Biakura, where they make mochi, craft beer and soy sauce. Japan is not only famous for its mad cars, it is famous for all sorts of things, but one of the things it's best known for is soy sauce, which has been made here for hundreds of years and it pretty much accompanies every meal. So we're on our way to a traditional soy sauce brewery to see exactly how it's made and to see if we can help out. They even make beer here, so we might try and grab a couple of those while we're at it. It turns out the reason she looks so confused is not that I'm speaking terrible French, it's because they actually make the beer somewhere else. This is just the place where they make the soy sauce. So we're going to go inside and check it out. So we are down here at Kardoya Honten. They make beer, miso and also soy sauce. Oh, and this smells. place that we're in right now, not only does it smell like just deliciousness, this is where they have been making soy sauce for the last hundred years. And these barrels that you can see are over 500 years old and they're not made anymore because in all the modern places they use big stainless steel vats and this is brewed so it's, um, it's made yeah, much like beer. Yeast is in there, water, salt and soybeans. Yeah, that's right. And those three things, they put them in there, they ferment and the environment that they're in changes the taste. So while a lot of places are just doing it on an industrial scale in stainless steel, these, are, these barrels are from the Edo period of Japan hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And so they have a very, very unique taste and we are going to be smashing some and putting that on our... We're not going to be smashing it. We're going to be delightfully, delicately, <laughs> tastefully and culturally sensitively enjoying some of it on our meal tonight. <laughs> Oh, that is not what I expected it to look like at all. What does it look like? Not what you'd expect. Do we, do we still want to eat it? Whoa, what? I thought it would look like sauce. I oh, guess they've, just, they've got the soybeans, they've got the water and the salt, and then all these rocks and, must just be holding it down. And so if you look at the year, so the year is 30. We're in 30 at the moment. Behind us here is 29. And there's so a 28 look, down there, so the, that's two years. So that one's been there two years. It'd be interesting to see. On oh, the two years, ones are covered, so there must be like... You yeah, know, just doing their thing. It's so interesting. I mean, you see beer breweries and stuff everywhere, but I feel like soy sauce is the thing that would normally be made in some factory somewhere. Not through, like this. You know, just not old school like this. That's amazing. This one's got a stir in it. Look Pull at that. Pull that stir all the way out. Oh, look at that. Ugh. Whoa. That's Delicious. crazy. Stir it up, mate. Oh, look at that. It's so thick look at and that. beany. It smells good. And look at the stuff stuck to the side of the thing. Poor Cheryl. Soy sauce originated in China where seasonings were originally used as a way of preserving food. Eventually this process developed and found its way to Japan hundreds of years ago, where the Japanese honed their own brewing methods. 
Legend has it that while making miso, the Zen monk Kukushin realized that the liquid that seeped out tasted delicious. Today, there are bottles of soy sauce sitting on tables all around the world, and Japan makes some of the best. And here, they're making it in the same traditional way that it's been made for hundreds of years. So we need to go get ourselves some of this so we can JDMify all of our food, but also, We've always said every single time we bought one of these cars from Japan, they yep. always smell like, what do they smell like? Soy, Soy sauce, sauce, cigarette smoke. Cigarette smoke. Sweat. Sweat. And petrol. And petrol. So that combo of four things, with some actual legit JDM sauce, we add some sweat, some cigarette smoke, a little bit of petrol, get that into a little container, spray it throughout your Audi, instant JDMify your car. Well, we've got to find some people to help us smoke some durries because I don't want to. But I reckon <laughs> that we can work on the sweat part with a bit of a run through here and the petrol's no problem and get some soy sauce. We should go find out how Let's to get some, some of this. Do we just scoop it and take it or I hope what do we so. do? Let's go ask the boss. You're doing a good job. Thanks, mate. This is the lid. Do you reckon they give us a job? Uh, I don't think they would give us a job, mate. Um, them? But what's interesting about this is you go, wow, there's some special magical lid stuff going on. Just like people have these fantasies about Japanese cars. They're, yep. wow, it's a special lid. This is just plywood. This is just varnish out of a can. There's nothing like particularly uh, mysterious. Uh, <laughs> mysterious going on here, uh, except uh, what we have seen around Japan is that a lot of people are DIYing. They're making yeah. stuff themselves. Like yeah. someone has made this. Like they haven't contacted a factory and said, "Go and give us ten of these things." You can see someone's cut it themselves with some kind of jigsaw, um, and now it's getting all painted up. And this gentleman gets to rest his go. legs and arms while we help, and maybe we can trade it for a bottle of soy sauce. That's a great idea, Martin. Look at that. One more. This boy. Oh, hey. I missed a spot. So this is one of the river stones that they put on top of those big 500 year old vats. They use these, uh, these panels that my good friend here was just painting up to help out. And then they pile these stones on top and it's an easy way of getting them on top to add heaps and heaps and heaps of pressure to kind of squash all the ingredients down together so they can then finally squash all the mad sauce out after it's been sitting there for a couple of years. So they throw a big pile of them on and you get some mad soy sauce. With a newfound appreciation for the salty stuff, it's time to grab some souvenirs and then get ready to hit the road again. <laughs> Where to next? So next we're going to a uh, legitimate Matsusaka beef farm um, because we're going to go and help out because we like to help. Because we've got skills, don't we? Some. This area is actually famous for its beef, but the Matsusaka beef farm, it is so legit they only have four cows. Like it is like... It's a traditional farm. It's the unicorn. It's like the GTR in California of Japan, of the cow world, of Matsusaka. And they also have tea. So potentially we can make our own tea, even though I think that takes lots of years. But we, could wait, so. we could wait there until our tea's ready and then yeah. have it with our mochi. Have a tea. Oh, that's really nice. Have some soy sauce. Drive mm. around a mad car. I could get used to eating that fresh every day. That's delicious. The problem is now you've had that, you never want it again from anywhere else. That's so good. To Should we go? Farm. Let's do it. To the farm. It's one thing to go to a country and enjoy its cities, cars and highways, but a country like Japan, with a population of 126 million people, needs food. So we're on our way to check out a farm a couple of hours away. been to a, a proper Japanese farm before and I really like farms. I think farms are an excellent thing. I'm glad they exist. They create things out of nothing. All different kinds of food. 
And what's great is you can grow a cow or you can grow a lettuce. That's right. You can grow you both. You can grow a crop. Um, and in the case of the area we're in, uh, there's lots of rice and when there isn't rice, there's lots of wheat. And they usually sort of go between both different crops depending on the time of the year. Rice re requires them to be able to flood the whole rice paddy out, which is why you mostly see them in the flat areas. Um, but then there's all other sorts of farms that are up in the hills. What I've also noticed is if it's flat in Japan, it's usually got something on it. Yeah. And if it's hilly, it doesn't. I grew up on a farm. I grew up on a goat stud actually, a Toggenberg goat stud. Toggenberg. Yeah, it's a is kind that, of goat. It's the kind of goat, is it? Yeah. It's cool. If we weren't in the Super Turbo right now, what car would you rather be in if you had your choice from the JDM Smorgasbord? JDM Smorgasbord sounds pretty good. Uh, maybe a Mira, of which I also own one. Really? Or a, uh, you know, Suzuki Alto Works would be kind of cool, but this, that's sounding sort of predictable, isn't it? See, I was going to say a Mini, but it would actually be an RX-7. See, I was going to say an R34. Really? The only time I felt like Actually, I don't want to be in any different car, especially for this, but when we're on the expressways, and everyone, like the speed limit says 80, but everyone just smashes it. Yeah, I think there's some kind of rule on some of the motorways that you need to be doing a minimum. Like one of the ones that we saw said 50, and if you go less than 50, you get fined just like if you're going over, which seems to make a bit of sense. But this car actually sits really well on the highway. Yeah. But if I did have my choice, uh, it'd be an RX-7, I reckon. And really? that is that is how I would roll. See, uh, sitting on that expressway, like, you know, with people blasting past me, I was thinking R34 GTR. Oh, that guy just went past on a Super Cub. Oh, really? So good. R34 GTR, I reckon would be pretty cool, especially on those big expressways. And man, they're not, they're not cheap either. We were on one section that was like probably 20 k's long. Yeah. And I think when I saw the, the toll come up, it was about 15 Aussie dollars to go 20 That's k's. That's crazy. But they're so it? good and so the roads are just super smooth, no traffic. R34 GTRs, well, part of the problem is that everyone just all over the world keeps buying them so they're not here anymore yeah um, and I mean I know a few people who live here and they're just sitting on their R34s just waiting uh, because like some of them on car sales are like up near two hundred thousand they're treating now. them like bitcoins like R34 bitcoins except just, they're not gonna halve in price well there's that well they might <laughs> you never know the import laws just changed apparently in Australia which means we can actually bring this thing home at all because for a long time you couldn't yes I mean my my old one snuck in under some like loophole that existed for a very short amount of time and then they shut that loophole and now apparently there's a new not even a loophole it's the new rules that say yeah okay all right just just do it then but the the ultimate jdm road trip car My is the rx7 r34 gtr skyline imagine that man Bayside Blue are one of those mad black ones, weather like this, autumn trees everywhere, big expressway, everyone doing 160, you're just blasting past oh, I, I 260. Mean, I don't even disagree with you because well, it, it is like a Gran Turismo right. car, isn't it? Like it's made for doing that kind of driving. Yeah, but see the problem Except with, you'd rather be in an RX-7. I know no, you would. I'd rather be in an RX-7. Do you know why you I wouldn't be in an RX-7? Why? Because you'd be at the side of the highway, either out of fuel oh, here we go. or with the car's Apex broken. seals blown out the back yeah, of it. Blah, blah, blah. R34 just be there reliable. You know why? Because Nissan like this, reliable. Yeah, everything I'm, works. I mean, except it didn't work. Dude, I've got it. I'm, you know, I'm it not even disagreeing with you. Everything you're saying is true. Everything, except that for this kind of trip, the RX-7 would be the more superior driving experience. No, windy roads. Because you know what's craziness. not a superior experience? Being on Being the side of the road. Broken yeah. down. <laughs> if you were to get an R34 GTR, it'd either be Bayside blue or black yeah. with mad wheels on it, right? Yeah. See, that's just a cliche now. It's, I'm not saying that technically it's not incredible, but I'm saying like that's just like the internet kids car now, which is totally fine. But the RX-7 is still like the bad boy of the, day, the JDM world. It's still the car that you'd go, oh, I didn't expect that. And that's, I think that's I, what you've got to do I can to further your soul. I can completely respect and understand where you're coming from. Like philosophically, I really think there's something to it. But the R34 is just, it's, it's so, so iconic. And the rotary is this sort of, strange thing that happened and then didn't happen and then it's gone and then they made oh, it's an, not gone like it's they only made just an, beginning they made an rx8 i mean look you went from rx7 to no, rx8 no, no. and then we went 34 to 35. i mean they're both disasters absolute disasters absolute disasters absolute we can disaster. agree on that we can and if, and if we can say that the rx7 is like the ultimate version of what it is and that the, the R34 GTR is, is the ultimate the version old, of what obviously. that is. We're agreed, man. If we can agree on that, then We're all agreed. we need to do is come back to Japan, 
get one each and go for a drive. That is a Lay it on me, man. Brilliant idea, man. Lay it that's, on me. That's good, man. I'm really glad we had this chat. I'm really glad we worked it out. I feel good. I feel good. It could be the waterfall. I feel good. But I generally just feel good. I feel good. I'd feel even better with some beef in my face. I'd feel even better if I had my RX-7. It seems I can't pick that up yet. R34s are better, though. The waterfall at this temple has brought a new sense of profound peace and centeredness, and now we're on the right path. Now we know that someday we need to road trip Japan in an R34 GTR and an RX-7. But for now, we're back in the superior vehicle, and our journey continues to do some important work on a tiny little Japanese farm. So we've come out to like a legit Matsusaka beef farm. This is a really small farm, and I'm on a mad little Honda kind of posty bike style thing similar to my CT110 that I've got at home, auto clutch. And Marty is over there plowing some fields on a Kubota. How are you doing? I'm loving this, man. I was made to plow stuff. This is so good. I love plowing stuff. This is amazing. How's I'm... your tractor going? You've got a Kubota at home, right? Like you actually have a Kubota at home. I'm, I have a KX41 V3 excavator, but this is next level, man. I love this. This is awesome. This is amazing. I wonder if I can smash a little bit of off-road while I'm here. You know what I mean? Smash a little bit of, um. well, I don't know if I can make this thing work. Maybe I can do a bit of off-road with you. How's your bike experience going? Whoa! <laughs> it's going pretty good, man. Just having a little cruise around Japan here. It's a beautiful afternoon. Getting the fields all plowed up and mad. This is epic. I wouldn't really want to rear end you. It's got some big blades and stuff going over there. I'm going to plow some more. How fast does that thing go? Look at it. You're plowing. I'm plowing. Dude, you're actually plowing. I know. It's freaking you're awesome. You're making a mess. This is the best, man. I am contributing to the economy and to the growth of food in another nation, I am helping. I am being a helpful human being on a tractor. This is helping somehow, some way. I'm plowing this field, plowing it good. I've got to pull the, the plow up now. Plow's coming up, turning. Here we go. Marty, I'm going to attempt to get a bit of air off the edge of this dude. Don't break it. Are you ready? Yep, I'll race you. Chop. Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> you idiot! What are you doing? You're ruining my field! I just plowed that! I'm going for another run. A bit more speed this time, I'm in second. Now I have to go and plow more. You're ruining my field. What an amazing place. This is incredible. This is not just one, like this is one farm also. So when you look at this place and you see a house and a, and a, a little paddock or paddy or whatever it is, there's like multiple of them, but then that might be like grandma's house, then uncle's house, then great grandma's house, and all the families live together. Keeping the families together, which yeah. I reckon is awesome. Like there's yeah. a lesson in that for everybody. And the other thing as well is that people who are farming, it's hard work. Yeah. And it's work that often goes unappreciated because people totally. don't really know where their food comes from, yep. how it gets to them. And yep. it's something that we've spoken about before. And what's also incredible is that these people are not just buying stuff, getting rid of it, buying, getting rid of it. We asked before like, who built this wall? They're like ancestors. Ancestors. They can't even say it was grandma or grandpa or great grandpa. Like, oh, that was 400 years ago. Yeah. And their family's been here for that long. It's, it's just incredible. From Like, we're from a nation that's so young. And then you come here and you go, wow, that's next level. And they've been looking at these mountains for like 20 generations. It's incredible, isn't Amazing. it? Amazing. I've, um, I've done a good job playing this field and you've done a good job ruining it. No, so I'm, now I'm, I have I'm, to go I'm and replow. No, I've, I've been helping you plow it with my mad little 50cc Honda Shally uh, jumps here. I think the only way that you can truly redeem yourself is to actually dig some proper dirt track planting rows for all the seeds. 
Really? Because otherwise I've got to go and replay everything, man. I think we actually have to go. I think we probably need to just leave so that they don't get too angry at us for... Um, Should we just go? Should we just... Gonna... Just do a quick little... Just disappear. You know those people that sneak away from parties? Yeah. They don't actually say goodbye, they just sort of... Just leave. In the final instalment of this story, we continue on the highway towards Tokyo where our little car has a date with destiny. Yes, look at it go! Matsupatabe! I'm heading out onto a main road which is utterly frightening. Oh, we're off to the Lord's <laughs> 